is Stacy from Let's Cook Y'all. Welcome back to our channel. We've had a couple of subscribers, viewers ask how we make yogurt in the Instant Pot. There are two ways. One is very easy. It's called the cold start method. That's the one I usually do. I get my recipe from Frida and I will leave a link to the method below. But basically you need an Instant Pot that has a yogurt setting. The Lux models do not have a yogurt, so you have to use the boil method. This is cold start, which means you just mix two or three ingredients from cold from the refrigerator and start the yogurt process. So what I'm gonna use is Fairlife. It has to have some type of an ultra filtered, ultra pasteurized milk. They recommend Fairlife, that's what I've always used. And you need a couple of tablespoons of the kind of yogurt you like. I'm going to use a plain, non-fat Greek. You need it to be unopened. If the container is open, the cultures that you need to create the yogurt from the milk are not fresh enough, but you can freeze the rest of that, and I'll show you what I do at the end of the video. So basically, we're just going to combine milk, a couple tablespoons of yogurt, whisk it together. You do not need the sealed pressure cooker lid. I just use a glass lid and an Instant Pot that has the yogurt setting. So let me show you how I make easy cold start yogurt in the Instant Pot. take the rest of the yogurt once I open the container and freeze it in ice cube molds, trays, and then once it's frozen in the individual, then I'll put it in a Ziploc in the freezer, and the next time or two that I make yogurt, I won't have to buy a new unopened container to use. This will take out probably about 30 minutes before I start it, and then just whisk it in like we just did with the fresh milk. So it's a way to make one container that has the live active cultures lasts for several batches of yogurt. After it finishes the eight hours, you want to carefully remove the lid. It's full of condensation. We've got yogurt, but at this point, we do not touch it. We don't stir it. We don't stick a spoon in it. We don't do anything. We're gonna take, we're gonna take the inner pot out. Cover it with saran wrap and put it in the refrigerator for at least four hours to chill. All right, my yogurt has chilled about four hours. It's pretty thick. If you can see, a spoon stands up. It's still got some whey in it. I actually like it um, really thick, like a Greek style, so I go ahead and strain it. I have never used the added sweetened condensed milk that you can put in it. I imagine if you do that, you would not need to strain it. I know the time or two that I've made it with the Nestle's Bliss, it did not need to strain as long, but I still like to strain mine, get it really thick. You can buy. Uh, strainers, nut bags. I use the cheap and dirty method, which is take a colander, just line it with coffee filters. I'm gonna transfer it in here and let the whey drain out. It will get come into the bowl and separate. The whey is great to use for salad dressings, bread, pancakes, biscuits, things like that. So we're just gonna scoop it out and put it back for another two to four hours. This is personal preference, however long you want to let it strain, it gets thicker as it strains. You may not even want to strain it at this point, but I'm gonna go ahead and do mine and we'll check it in a couple hours. Okay, I've let my yogurt um, strain probably for about three, three and a half hours. This is about the consistency that I like it. It is really thick, it's probably closer to a soft cream cheese or a ricotta than it is yogurt, but I like it really thick. I'm gonna dish it up and store the whey that is left, which is a clear liquid, and I'll include some 
uh, stuff in the description below about ideas, things that I use the whey for. I'm going to scoop it up. I've got a combination of some, just some little plastic containers, just little glass storage ones. And then for yogurt, I bought in my local home goods four little glass containers with plastic lids. I've also got one yogurt container. I usually do that one with granola. I like to keep my yogurt plain. Remember, this is extremely plain. This is nothing but plain, non-fat Greek yogurt and milk. It has no sweetener in it, nothing added. So I usually add honey. Sometimes I stir stevia into it. I'm gonna keep some of them plain to use with fruit or honey or granola. And then I'm gonna take some of it and mix up. I have used these Jell-O Simply Good powders, chocolate or strawberry. I think I'm gonna do strawberry today and I will add some packets of stevia to that and make some strawberry yogurt. So let me show you real quick, sped up how I do that and see how much yogurt we get out of this batch. This is the clear way that drained from straining the yogurt. You can keep it in your refrigerator. I think up to a few months, you can also freeze it. I've got some in the freezer. I'm gonna keep this, if it will all fit, in my refrigerator. Like I said, I'll leave some ideas below. One of the main things I use it for is uh, pancakes, waffles, bread making, and the main thing I do with it is make um, salad dressing. I have a ranch salad dressing mix and I use the whey to make a really good salad dressing. But if you freeze it, it'll keep in your freezer for months. So let's see what we ended up with. Okay, my one container of Fairlife and my two tablespoons of the starter, which I froze the rest. I could do the math. I know that this container of milk I used in a bought a coupon on, so I got it for less. But let's just say you spent $4.00 even $5, I ended up with three, four, eight containers of yogurt plus some whey. So if you can get Fairlife cheaper or, you know, maybe you don't want to try this, but it's, it's not, I don't do it because it's cost effective. I do it because I love the flavor. I love being able to make my own yogurt and know what goes in it. I like being able to do this variety. I've left two of them plain that I'll ha add fresh fruit and yogurt to, or I can add more granola to them. I've got one in a little to-go cup with granola. I've got two already flavored with strawberry and three with chocolate that are like a dessert for me. And then the whey with a lot of uses. So this is something I have enjoyed doing with my Instant Pot. I hope this has helped someone and given you some ideas. Feel free to leave a comment, a question, or a suggestion. As always, thanks so much for stopping by our channel, Let's Cook Y'all. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe if you hadn't already. Have a wonderful and blessed day, y'all. Bye.